Author of The Gust by Rick Austinson Chapter 1 Rejection Every great journey and adventure that has ever been undertaken throughout all the histories has always shared one key thing in common. Each began with a single step. But for some, it wasn't always a step in the conventional sense. Ryo landed headlong with a splash in the muddy drainage ditch beside the road. She should have seen that coming. Bits of green and brown moss clung to her face, and foul-smelling grayish-brown water ran down her neck as she picked herself up and tossed back her single, long black braid. Another day, another wonderful adventure in being knocked in a puddle. The proud city of Ninpu was often called the City of Rain, because it rained there more often than anywhere in the whole empire about four times a week, on average, except during the rainy season, when it happened several times a day, and during the winter, when it was dark for four solid weeks and snowed. This meant that the city never lacked water, and older children never lacked puddles to shove Ryo into. There is, unfortunately, nothing imposing about a little girl standing in a puddle, soaked to the bone and covered from head to toe in mud. Without breaking her gaze, Ryo stepped out of the low ditch and into the heather, where her enemy had drawn a knife. He was an older boy, about a head taller and very muscled. But muscles were slow, awkward, and not very useful unless you had good armor to cover them. Why do I even bother to waste my time with you? he snarled. Why do I even touch you? Because you're a coward. Ryo replied simply, who attacks from behind. Can we say, honor? It's easy, honor. Now you try. Without another word, the boy leaned forward and lunged at Ryo with the knife. Ryo caught his wrist with one hand, ducked low, and with a smooth, fluid motion, used the boy's momentum to catapult him over her shoulder. He landed on the heather behind her, and rolled to his feet, but Ryo had already turned around. Casually, almost conversationally, she reached behind her back and drew a short, hand-carved wooden training knife from her belt. No, like this. Cut! 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 Disarm! Cut! Ryo released the older boy's arm and retrieved his razor-sharp tanto from where it had fallen in the heather. For a moment, she caught the reflection of the late morning sun high overhead in the glistening blade of the fine weapon. She bounced the rays expertly into his eyes and grinned mockingly. Then, as the older boy reached to grab it from her hand, Ryo tossed the weapon up, giving it just enough spin to flip end over end three times and land perfectly balanced on her outstretched pointer finger digging in far enough to raise one crimson drop of blood that also caught the glint of the sun's rays. Ryo once more flicked the weapon up and caught it by the blade, then threw it into the ground at the boy's feet. Her own wooden practice tanto hadn't left a single mark as it passed, thrice across his arm, and once more across his neck but she was quite sure it had cut deeper into his ego than any blade could. Ryo smeared the drop of blood under her right eye, leaving behind a dark, crimson teardrop. She shifted back on her right leg and took a strong stance, retrieving the little wooden practice knife from her belt. Now, she said quietly, would you like to try again? The boy sheathed his tanto and backed away, then spit on the ground at Ryo's feet. He was sixteen, a good three years Ryo's senior. But when he'd come at her with the knife, she'd dispatched him as easily as though he were a child. People were always surprised by Ryo's speed and strength. She was very slightly built for her age. But the way she moved allowed her to avoid attackers and use their own strength against them. Here, standing in the alley after the day's lessons, she wore the traditional attire of a ninja, 
light black clothes that hugged her body tightly, but stretched and flexed with her to allow her total freedom of movement. Her dark hair was tied back in a close-fitting braid, and her dark eyes were narrowed into slits. The boy was Kiyum Tamashiro, of the Tamake Tamashiro family. Rumiko Tamashiro was his younger sister, a girl Ryo's age. The Tamashiros were a wealthy family, and, as such, thought they were entitled to great honor. Ryo always thought that honor would be better deserved if they were more competent ninjas. Rumiko was a brat, and every other child knew it. Sometimes, they even hated her as much as Ryo. It might have seemed natural for the two girls to develop a friendship, both being shunned by their schoolmates. But Ryo found herself at odds with Rumiko as much, if not more, than the others. Rumiko was boisterous, outgoing, and generally loud. She treated her friends almost as badly as she treated her enemies. There was a game the children often played, a training challenge called Kateska. Ryo didn't get to play often, but when she did, she dominated. She liked Kateska because there were no real rules, hence no one could accuse her of cheating. Earlier that day they had played a game, and Ryo had beaten Rumiko with an unbelievable move. It was so unbelievable that the other children gasped and some even clapped. Rumiko, in tears, shrieked something about telling her mother and ran off. Ryo had groaned inwardly and sighed with dread. Kasumi Tamashiro was a relentless woman with a fiery temper, who believed every word her daughter said as though it had come from the oracle himself. Raya would rather fight ten pirates blindfolded than face another verbal thrashing from that woman. It was bad enough being yelled at. But Kasumi said all the things most adults were too polite to say out loud. Apparently, Rumiko's quest had ended with her brother, because he had come to avenge the girl's defeat. Come at Raya with a knife, that is, thus leading to the confrontation that allowed Ryo to repeat the same move and add another win to her tally. She left the quiet back alley and continued on her way, her own quest remembered, and the confrontation already forgotten. Ryo walked slowly down the street, listening to the bustle of life around her, but not hearing it. It was clear to all that she was in a world of her own, and the bright smile she wore said that it was a good world.